Welcome to Training Unleashed, the show that will help you design and deliver training that's off the chain and will make a difference. Now, here's your host, Evan Hackle. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a what I think is going to be an extremely interesting edition of Training Unleashed. My guest today is Frank Clark. He is the CEO of the VIA Group. And the VIA Group is an organization that's really focused on DE and I, which is, as everyone knows, one of the most important topics in the workplace. So, Frank, I'm going to start with a, with a simple softball question for everybody. What is DE and I? I know what it is, but I just let you handle that question. Well, thanks, Evan, for that question, because you're right. It is the most prolific thing in the marketplace, and it's in every corner office. It's in every boardroom across corporate America. So diversity, equity, and inclusion, which is the acronym um, spelled out of D-E-N-I, simply means this. Diversity is diversity of thought, diversity of experiences, diversity of, of course, ethnicity, and diversity of, of professional pedigree as well. So diversity comes in all shapes and sizes, Evan, and it's important in the workplace because over the last several decades, diversity has not been top of mind in the corner offices, in the boardrooms, of the Fortune 1000, and it certainly hasn't been top of mind in the uh, mid-market companies, companies that are 20 million to several billion dollars that are privately held. So today it's very prevalent because diversity, equity, and inclusion drives business value. That's really the formula. That's really the solution behind it. And that's what you're saying right now is really, I think, the heart of it, because yes, it's important because it's the right thing to do. But what companies are really discovering is, and what I'd love to have you talk about, is the impact it can have and how it can make a difference. So it's it's not just the right thing to do, it's good business. So maybe if you could spend time about sort of what your clients are seeing and finding out when they make this a priority in their organization. Uh, great question. And you're absolutely spot on. It drives business performance. It drives value. It drives innovation. It drives creativity. And the reason being is because you have now different ideology, different professional experiences, of course, different ethnicities and different schools of thought to bring to the table. And as we all know in business, a like-minded boardroom or like-minded executive suite certainly can drive results but one that has different points of view, different experiences, different strategic thinking can drive even better results. And that's really the business driver of diversity. It's not just about social justice, which of course has its lane as as it's important, but it's also about driving profitability, driving shareholder value, driving employee satisfaction and differentiation in the marketplace. And when you look at it from that vantage point, from that lens, Evan, you get real results uh, when it comes to company performance and driving uh, results. And Frank, if I can, I wanna add one other point. With younger generations, it also is a great recruiting tool because younger generations are much more value-based. And if you wanna get the brightest and youngest, the brightest younger talent into your company, they need to see it as a place that they wanna work at. Do Do you see that too? Oh, I completely agree. Um, with this generation uh, today, they're very focused on an inclusive and equitable environment. And quite frankly, they're mission driven as well. So DEI, diversity and equity inclusion, plays into that mission driven mindset. And it is certainly a powerful recruiting tool, whether it be a technology industry or whether it be a traditional brick and mortar manufacturing or industrial type of company as well. Certainly, it is a powerful and, quite frankly, necessary recruiting tool in today's market. Yeah, to- totally agree. So let's just talk about culture for a second. My experience is that culture is one of the most difficult things for organizations to change. And to do this right, 
it's not just to put up signs. It's not just to, you know, have everyone do an e-learning class. And this group knows about e-learning classes. It's really about a cultural shift. And how do you, you know, and, and you, you know, my listeners here are the people that do, right? They're the training people, the HR people, the operations people that make this stuff a reality. What tips and ideas can you give to them in terms of how to make a cultural shift to not just talk about it, but to live it? Yeah, that's an imperative in any organization, whether it be for profit or not for profit. Uh, the culture drives strategy and it, of course it drives execution as well. Culture is a number one. And in the space of, of d and and what I would call cultural adaption, uh, it requires a, a couple of different things. One, the CEO and or the leader of that organization must believe in it. And they must be the evangelists to drive it forward. That's very important and has extraordinary meaning. So the CEO and or senior leadership must embrace it. And that means not just the one CEO, but of course the entire executive leadership team as well. And subsequent to that, the board, if they have a board of directors, uh, whether it's again a for-profit or not-for-profit organization, the board also has to embrace it. And finally, once it's embraced, once that aspiration is there, once that objective is there around diversity, equity, and inclusion, then typically speaking, there needs to be some DEI readiness that takes place, training, development, assessments. Uh, so the unbiased and biased um, uh, unconsciousness comes out and comes to light, and it can be discussed in a safe, open, moderated environment. And then you can begin to kind of drive results culturally in that kind of approach. Let's, let's talk a little bit about assessments. Sure. Um, because I do think it's important to understand where you're starting to put together an effective plan to know where you need to go. So what type of assessment tools do you like to work with? Do you recommend? Mm -hmm. um, do, you, do you guys have a tool yourself? Mm -hmm. Yes, we have proprietary tools uh, specific to the group. And uh, we also work with uh, strategic partners that have their own proprietary tools. So we don't, our tools are not off the shelf. They're certainly very proprietary to our organization and our strategic partners. But what those tools do is they get into the psychology. They also get into just kind of the motivation when it comes to DEI. Um, it gets to the root of unconscious bias. It gets to the root of conscious bias as well. And um, it really kind of gets behind the curtain of someone's thought process, experiences, professional and personal when it comes to diversity, equity, and inclusion. That's an important starting point because that gets you to the root cause of what that unconscious bias may be as well as conscious bias. And then from there, after we get them DEI ready, then we start to actually do assessments and training and learning on what DEI is like we just discussed earlier, Evan, and that business value proposition. What is the business driver? What is the business um, imperative and why is it there? That's when we take that next step and start to get into a strategy and execution plan. Well, Frank, I think you just explained to the audience why you're a guest on the show. <laughs> and um, I, from my personal experience, no one understands this and understands how to execute it better than the VIA group. You guys are you know, really amazing at it. And, and I think it's really important that organizations don't just pay lip service, but really embrace it. Because of all the things we talked about at the beginning about the impact on business. What I'd love to have you do now, if you could, is, you know, don't name a name, but maybe give us a case study. Uh, you know, this is, you know, a company that, that hired us. This is, you know, what maybe people thought. Then this is what we found when we did the survey work. This is the package we sort of created for supporting them, and then this is what happened, what the result was. Sure. Uh, this is company is in the industrial space, uh, in the construction space as well. And uh, what we are doing with them is a number of different things when it comes to DE and I. Uh, one is this whole assessment piece, right? Um, they're a company that is kind of in a time warp when it comes to their executive suite. 
and certainly their board of directors as well. So there is this assessment around why has it been this way? And it's now 2021. Why has it been this way for the last three decades? So we get to the why and we've gotten to the why. A lot of it's unconscious bias. A lot of it's just, hey, that's who I know. That's who's part of my circle. So I hire and bring into the business what I know, what I'm used to, what makes me comfortable, and what's like-minded with my experiences. Very natural human reaction. So that's been part of the assessment. Then we break down and, and, and have gotten to the root cause of, hey, your earnings are at X, your, your revenues are at Y. Um, Let's kind of look at an analysis of companies that are in your space that have diversity, that have equity and inclusion, and kind of their financial results. <laughs> that always gets the attention of the corner office, that always gets the attention of the board as well, whether it be a public or privately uh, held company. So we kind of walk through that analysis and always the data, always the insight comes back. I don't care if it's in the industrial space, in the technology space, in the healthcare space, it doesn't matter the industry. The results always come back data-wise, Evan, that a homogenous company underperforms one that is diverse, <laughs> always. And it came back in this regard as well. So that analysis really piqued their interest that, hey, this is not just, as you mentioned, the right thing to do from a social impact perspective, from a social justice perspective. This is the right business imperative because it drives shareholder value. It drives earnings. It drives stock, it drives sales, it drives market value creation. So, so we were, went to- were there, were there surprises that they found? So when you did the survey and you came back and said, hey, this is what we found, were they taken back or was it pretty accurate? There were some surprises, yes, uh, because they're doing fine, relatively speaking, but they're not doing exceptionally well, right? So when they looked at the companies in their sector that are doing exceptionally well, nine out of 10 of them had a diverse leadership team. Nine out of 10 of them had a diverse board. Um, diversity in experiences, diversity in professional pedigree, diversity, of course, ethnicity-wise, and diversity in approach and strategic um, um, thinking and philosophy. So all that came to light in that analysis. So yes, there were some surprises. Cool. So after you found all these things, what were the steps that the company did to make adjustments and, and what were the results? Yes. So what we've been doing is we've been engaging in a couple of different things to drive these results. One is a strategy and a strategic planning uh, process, right? Around DNI, specific to DNI strategy to drive results when it comes to diverse talent, to drive results, of course, when it comes to um, uh, a diverse way of thinking as well. So that's been the key driver, recruiting, developing, and training diverse talent. We have brought that into the business. And quite frankly, there's been some leadership development within the business as well to train folks that are in the business that are um, mainstream executives on how to do that as well, right? Because the last thing you want is to bring in diverse talent and not retain them or not develop them to continue to drive value to the business. So we've gone through that exercise and they've seen results. And quite frankly, when that diverse talent comes, it also brings more diverse talent, right? You know, kind of success begets success. Diversity begets even more diversity. It's the same mantra. So you see that as well. I should point out to the audience because, you know, when, when we start the show, we don't really do a lot of bio and all of that. But the, the VIA group also specializes in finding fantastic talent. That's one of the areas you do. So not only do you identify the need, but you can actually find the perfect people for those roles. And I think that's really critical because you described the circle issue. I hire from my circle. And you know, we need to pop these bubbles. We need to pop these circles and bring in and bring in new people. And you know, having a, a a group like the VIA group where you can go out and find the right talent that has all the skills, all the knowledge, and brings that different form of diversity into the culture of the company, I, I think it is, is really one of the critical services that you offer. Uh, and, you know, in fairness, there are other people that do too. Uh, but, you know, it's important to get great talent. Mm -hmm. um, 
I also love what you said about you don't want to lose them because if you lose that talent, you can maybe go in reverse mm-hmm. because there could be other people that exit with them. That's uh, awesome. So uh, that, that, you know, that's, uh, you know, to me, uh, to me critical. Um, so I always sit here and I try to think about the people in the audience and, you know, some of the people in the audience are thinking, you know, I should probably call Frank. Some yeah. of the people in the audience say, well, I don't have the resources to call Frank or my company is much smaller than, you know, the typical kind of company that can afford to bring you, bring you in. Where are the people, you know, that aren't going to hire you, where do they start? How do they make this happen if they don't necessarily have the expertise? You know, what advice do you give to somebody that maybe a, a smaller business, maybe it's 10 to 20 employees uh, or, uh, you know, under 100 employees, you know, where did they start? Yeah. Interestingly enough, that is the, the perception that a firm like ours only can work with a larger established business. But I will tell you that our firm also works with early stage startups. We have several now that we're working with that are 12, 15, 20 people, but they have real growth trajectory, uh, fantastic, um, what I would call differentiation marketplace and great management team. So they work with us as well in this space of DEI because they realize to continue that growth and scale and brand awareness, they must have DEI as part of that, as not just a social action, but part of their business strategy. And quite frankly, back to that, that, that word culture, part of their cultural DNA that is really critical for them. So we do work with companies like that, but uh, to answer your question with more color, Evan, if in fact your budget is you know, a shoestring, um, then there's all types of resources on the web that'll kind of get you started. There are classes that your local community college have, not to mention uh, your, your four universities have in this area of DNI. And you can take these classes online for a small marginal investment that will give you a significant return, at least on the education of DEI and how it applies to your company to kind of begin to move the needle forward is what I would recommend. Those are all those are all good thoughts. And, and I think you do make an excellent point um, that if you're growth minded, mm-hmm. you really, no matter your size, need to make this a real priority. I, mm-hmm. I think that that's a good point. You know, one other thing that we haven't really discussed is the attraction of customers to organizations that embrace diversity. And maybe tell us a little bit about what you've seen and noticed in that area. Um, Without question, access to customers and then driving customer growth is everything to our clients. Um, That is the driver behind creating that market value. That's the driver behind creating that enterprise value, customers. So a lot of customers in today's market, uh, whether they be in the financial services industry or technology or healthcare or industrial manufacturing, really want to see um, their customers or their suppliers, their partners have DEI as part of their go-to-market because it's important to them. It's important to their employees. It's important to their shareholders. It's important to their stakeholders as well, which is a little different than shareholders. So they, they want to see that. And when they see it, it becomes a differentiator. So we have a client uh, in particular that does a lot of work with the financial services industry. And the financial services, of course, has tremendous diversity in all kinds of areas, including social economic diversity. So with that being said, they knew that their competitors, and this is a mid-market company, necessarily weren't cutting edge when it comes to diversity, equity, inclusion. So they utilize that as a point of differentiation for their go-to-market strategy when it comes to their financial services customers. And lo and behold, whether they be a mid-market financial services customer or a large financial services customer, they are now top of mind with them because of this DEI differentiation Again, DEI differentiation that they have in the marketplace. It's a really interesting way to look at it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, as I'm sitting here and I'm listening to you, 
Uh, I'm about to ask you a really difficult question. <laughs> uh oh. Let me get ready. Let's, let's just think five years from now. Hmm. How do you see the world different? And what can we learn from your forecast of where we'll be in five years that would maybe get people to get the importance of starting today and not waiting five years? Excellent question. My guidance around that, Evan, in a five-year window, DEI will be more prolific in corporations than we've ever seen in American business history and parts of the world outside of the U.S. Uh, because of how it drives business value, we will see more women um, at the helms of companies than we've ever seen. And I'm talking about Fortune 50, yet alone the Fortune 500. We will see more people of color uh, that are women and men at the helm of companies and in boardrooms because it's again driving value, is creating jobs, is creating innovation, and it's differentiating, quite frankly, the US from other parts of the world when it comes to being industry leaders and thought leaders. I think we'll see that more and more and more between now and let's call it 2026. Also, I think you know when it comes to that forecast, you will find that schools and colleges, whether they be a mainstream college or whether they be what you would call a diverse college called an HBCU, uh, as an example, you will see colleges and universities teaching this subject matter of DNI as part of the core curriculum, uh, which is a game changer all in and of itself. Because now, when you go into the workforce, you're already educated, not just in your experiences, but also strategically, socially, economically, on what DNI is coming right out of a university or a college. That's what I would project in the next five years. You know, it, it's interesting you say this because um, a couple of years ago, I traveled with my youngest son to look at colleges. And the first thing he wants to know is how diverse is the, is the student body? And that's something. And, and what happens on the campus that promotes diversity? Mm -hmm. And, you know, which, you know, you know, right now he just turned 20. Um, you know, I think Gen Z, this stuff really matters. Uh, as you were talking, though, something really came across to me is I think one of the great things about this country is we're diverse. Mm -hmm. Maybe we don't have great diversity in all our businesses, mm -hmm. but there is, you know, a great benefit of the fact that we do have a diverse population. A lot of countries don't have nearly as diverse a population. Mm -hmm. How is the rest of the world doing with DE and I? And do we have a, a competitive advantage in, in the U.S. because we have a, a talent pool? Or am I like completely not understanding the world, which is possible? No, no, that's an excellent question. And when you look at it uh, from a global perspective, uh, the U.S. certainly has a competitive advantage uh, because it is now becoming more and more of a business imperative throughout the United States of America. When you look at other parts of the world like Europe or Asia, uh, certainly parts of uh, Canada, um, DNI is certainly not as prevalent uh, in, in those parts of the world. And uh, so what I would say is there will be what I would call fast followers in this space. Yeah. I would say the US has the opportunity to be that first mover to really drive it into scale and really be best in class when the world thinks about global businesses and diversity, they think of the US first and foremost. We do have that opportunity and quite frankly, bully pulpit right here and now to establish that as our brand uh, when it comes to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, but you know, parts of Canada definitely are coming on when it comes to DNI, no question about it. Um, you know, even certain parts of Europe as well are coming along in that area. But when it comes to a first mover advantage, we're certainly as a country, the United States, ahead of the rest of the world when it comes to D and I and how we think about it. Yeah, which is great, mm -hmm. wonderful. It is. Um, we're coming to the end, but I would love to have you now take a few moments and tell people about the VIA Group and what types of services you offer and the types of customers that are good fits. 
-hmm. And then don't, you know, we, we got an offer coming and a tip for everyone too. So, but I That's think it would right. be good for people, people to hear, especially because you do also work with smaller companies. So, I mean, there are people in this audience that are with big companies and people in this audience that are small, we, some solopreneurs. It's pretty hard to be diversified if you're a solopreneur. But, it is. Uh, <laughs> but let, let's hear about the VIA Group. Sure. So the VIA Group is a leadership advisory and consulting firm. And we are based throughout the U.S., I'm in Chicago. We have locations in Salt Lake City, Utah. We have locations in Portland, Oregon. We have locations in Texas and Connecticut. Um, so we are certainly spread throughout the U.S. Um, strategically and geographically. And what we bring to the table is leadership advisory and what I call work streams. One work stream that we just discussed is DEI. DEI strategy, DEI consulting, DEI implementation. Another work stream that we discussed as well is executive search, senior level executive search that's cross-functional uh, and cross-industry throughout the U.S. and quite frankly, throughout the globe. That's another work stream. And another work stream that we bring in solution is in strategy, business strategy, strategic planning, and strategic frameworks to small, medium, and large organizations. And, and last but not least, what we also do is we work with companies, not just of large sizes, as you kind of alluded to earlier. We also work with companies that are mid-market as well as early stage that have great growth trajectories. And we don't have an industry focus per se, Evan. We work across industry, financial services, industrial, technology. We have a tremendous private equity practice as well. And we also work with uh, healthcare and the like. So, that gives you a, a sense of via group. And we are what we preach. We eat our own cooking. We're a very diverse company as well. I'm obviously a diverse person and I'm the CEO. We have members You're of You're obvious our to me and my television audience. You are not obvious to the radio, to the podcast audience. Uh, Frank, <laughs> Frank happens to be a person of color. Um, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, but having said that, you know, our board, we have a board of advisors that's very instrumental uh, to our growth strategy, to our branding. Uh, that's certainly diverse as well with women, uh, of course, uh, people of color as well. So we're a diverse company. Our partnership is diverse. We have women in our partnership. We have people of color in our partnership as well. So we eat our own cooking as we bring it to the marketplace. Well, I, I want to add something else about the VIA Group. The VIA Group takes advantage of an advisory council. And this is something that I, you know, my, I just like hugely believe in um, to allow an organization to get diversity by sharing with their advisory council, which is a diverse group of people in itself. And I think having an advisory council for most businesses is an excellent idea. At, at Total Training, we have advisory groups that we utilize, and it allows us to, as a management team, even though we're a relatively diverse management team, to even have a bigger, bigger group of people to get diversity. So I compliment you on, you know, living what you do and having and having an advisory council uh, to bring more diversity of thought to your to your organization. Um, I know you have an offer, uh, so if you would take a moment and share that offer with everyone. Absolutely. Um, at VIA Group, as we've kind of talked about in this call, we certainly are experts in the DNI space, and I welcome the opportunity to your listeners, to your audience, to have a 30-minute, uh, what I would call, consultation um, with folks that were interested in learning more about DNI and wanted to actually look at that as part of their business strategy uh, going forward. So we'd love to have that discussion. And of course, they can reach out to me by way of our uh, website and uh, get in touch with me. And what is your website? It's viagrouppartners.com. Viagrouppartners.com. And I, yes. say that, I say that twice, Frank, because some places there'll be a little description in some places, depending if we, you're like listening to this on iTunes, you don't get that description. So just, that's why I'm repeating it. Um, 
And, you know, as you know, and our audience knows, and a lot of people wait for it, um, if you had one tip to share with this audience, what would that one tip be? Love that question. And I'm going to veer off message to give you a broader tip that I think is important for all of us to, to embrace as we build our companies, as we build our careers, and as we drive success. And that's a three-pronged approach of learn, earn, and return. That is a powerful thing to incorporate in your career. Meaning, when you have the opportunity to learn your, your expertise, you get very good, you become a subject matter expert. What does that bring to you? Earnings. You begin to earn. You begin to be able to create a, a meaningful amount of, of capital if you, of course, manage your assets well and you manage your resources well. So that's the earning component. And then once you've earned, Evan, then you return it back. You pay it forward. You bring other people with you. You teach them the lessons that you've learned. You get involved in philanthropy that's important to you and your company and your family. And that's what I mean by return. So it's learn, earn, and return is what my tip would be for today. It's a fantastic tip. Um, I want to thank you for being a, a great guest, interesting guest. I am sure everyone, including myself, has learned something. I want to take a moment. I want to thank my friends at the C-Suite, C-Suite TV, C-Suite Radio for all of your support as always. And of course, I want to thank the listeners for being here because we wouldn't have a show without you. Um, I also want to let everyone know that um, we just started, if you go to our website, trendingunleashed.net, we just started a book club uh, where we're getting together and reading business books and having discussions. Uh, so I want to invite our listeners to join our book club and go to our, and go to our website. And Frank, again, thank you very much for being a great guest. Thank you for having me, Evan. Training Unleashed is brought to you by Tortal Training, specializing in e-learning and interactive online training solutions for corporate, government, nonprofit, and franchise organizations. Tortal makes effective training easier. Just go to tortal.net to gain access to real-world tools that can make a difference. That's tortal.net, T-O-R-T-A-L, tortal.net.